You're listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast. Salud. We're good. Ooh, that's a good mimosa, Oscar. Yes, it is. Oscar. We, we just a good champagne here. What is this champagne? The one we use is a French, of course, champagne. For French. Uh, Ooh, what is that? What, what is your name? Jackie. Jackie? Nice to meet you, Jackie. Jackie just brought uh, a huge plate. Of migas? Oh, these are called chilaquiles puercos. Chile, chile quiles puercos. White puercos because they have a pork belly, uh -huh. bacon, and chorizo in it. Man. I don't know how long this podcast is going to be because I'm probably going to have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 it looks amazing. And then what is it, sunny side eggs? Yes. So let me ask you this. You're talking about champagne. And you said, of course, it's French because it's champagne. So is champagne s similar to like tequila, where you can only call it tequila if it's from a certain place? Yes, Same thing with that's right. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's interesting. Like Italy is, is going to be called uh, Prosecco. Prosecco? Prosecco. And is that another word for champagne? Yes. Prosecco. They cannot use champagne in Italy. Oh. So Spain... They use espumoso. Okay. Bless you. <laughs> Oscar's still open. Oscar, what's your last name? Gomez? Gomez. Gomez. Oscar Gomez. And we're at his almost famed restaurant, Salomon. 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 Is that your, is that your middle name? Yes. Okay. That's how you get it. So, uh, super excited to sit here with you. First time that... Uh, that we met, I came here with a couple of mutual friends of ours, <coughs> John and Elise, and yes. it was, uh, I think it was Valentine's Day. Now, I'll tell you this. One thing that's weird about me is... Everything. A lot. <laughs> a lot. But for being a, a fat guy, I'm super picky with the food, you know? Aren't we all? And it's bad. I always joke with people when I tell people that... Uh, when I was younger, my dad coached women's softball, men's softball. So every weekend, we were at softball tournaments in the middle of nowhere. So all we all ever ate on the weekends, concession stand food, hot dog, nachos, Frito pie. So I tell everybody I got a concession stand palate. So when we came here for that uh, that day with our, our John and Lise, you made a pork belly with like a pasta. What was that? <coughs> uh... Yes, I, I'm not so sure if it was a pork belly or raviolis. No, or, it or was, was just the uh, spaghetti noodles, uh, spaghetti noodles mm -hmm. with a with a pork belly of la diabla. That was really good. Yeah, and um, I told Nina, I said, I said, you know what? I would have never have ordered that on my own because, and I've told you before too. There's there's ingredients in that stuff that, like, I wouldn't buy those ingredients at the grocery store, but when you put them together. Man, they're amazing. They're amazing. So you told me a long time ago that you had gotten you. Where'd you grow up in Mexico? Uh, yes. Okay, where in Mexico? Well, it's a small town in, in, in a region called Los Altos de Jalisco, but I live in Guadalajara because I went there for uh, to study at university. Okay, is yeah. that the major university in the area? Oh yeah. This is the second most important university of, of that country. Of oh, really? Where's the first one? In Mexico City? Oh, Mexico City. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. How far are those two apart, Mexico City and Guadalajara? Uh, about 360, 380 miles Okay, so apart. it's a pretty good distance, but it's not anything yes. drastic. Nah, nothing major, no. Okay. And what did you study? Well, I, I studied, uh, I'm a CPA. Okay. Well, what made you want to get into that? Was it the family business or? Well... When I was 12, I don't talk about this a lot. I got a, I had a brother that he was about to become a CPA, but then an accident occurred and he passed away. Oh, I see. And I promised myself that I will follow his footsteps because I, I really like him as a brother. He was like my idol. Okay. 
He was a nice guy. Everybody loves that guy. What was I his mean, name? Everybody. His name was uh, Jose Angel, but everybody called him Pepe. Okay. He was an incredible person as a human being. So the, I never hear any bad comment about him, ever. And, and it's just like the whole town was crying when he passed away. Really? Yeah. Because he was having fun with a three, four-year-old kid, as well with a 97, 95-year-old So he got along with everybody. With everybody. Everybody loves him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of those rare people. Yeah. Yeah. How much older was he than you? He was nine years older than me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So were y'all, was he your only brother or did you have No, I have another brother in okay. between. And, no, and they don't like him that much, as much as... Well, <laughs> my no, middle, I'm joking, I'm joking. The, the, the middle brother didn't like me much. So. <laughs> it's funny, I have an older brother. I think I told you before, too. He passed away a couple years ago. Very similar. Very similar in personality. Everybody liked him. Now, his name was Eddie. And uh, yeah, Eddie made mistakes, you know. But... Everybody liked Eddie, you know, and it was funny because my dad has five kids, three different women. So the three oldest uh, he raised by with my mom and also with his sister and, and, and our grandma. And it was funny because you could ask grandma, who, who's your favorite grandma? And grandma wouldn't care. She Eddie. She'd tell you to your face. She'd tell everybody, in the, Eddie's my favorite. <laughs> So you go, you go to uh, college and you graduate? Yes. Did you graduate on time or did it take you a little bit longer? No, no, no. On time. Before. Before okay. my time. I, and then after that, I, become a, I became a professor at the same university. Oh, really? Yeah. They thought I was so good for it. So How I was long a did professor. you teach? I teach about six years before I moved uh, to California. Okay. Or seven years. Something around there. What drew you to California? Huh? What drew you to California? What made you go there? Uh, a girl? I was not. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, was, I was already married. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, I always thought uh, the, whatever I was doing was not uh, appreciated. The, the system was not fair for me. Hmm. You know, being a professor, start working six o'clock in the morning. I was a full time professor. And, and then also I had my, my own firm. Oh, wow. So you were working as a CPA and teacher. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And also, I was invited to do some uh, conferences here and there. Wow. And so, I guess that took a lot of time from, I would imagine, from your family, you know? All the time of the day, you know, from 6 o'clock, six o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock in the evening, at night time. So, how many, t- how many years did that go on before you decided, hey, you know what? This isn't working for me and I need a, need a uh, change? About 11. 11 years? Yeah. By the way, I'm eating this food that that he's brought to me, and you guys are missing out. <laughs> <laughs> and wait for what is coming. Oh, man. I'm going to need a to-go plate. <laughs> well, th- the problem here, when you ask for a to-go plate, you got to pay double. Oh, I'll, I'll pay I'll pay triple <laughs> if I can get another plate to go. <laughs> so you moved to California. What, how is, is uh, I'm not, like, as far as... Uh, geography goes is california north of guadalajara or is, or did you make that move that direction like wh- where is in reference to california and guadalajara are they pretty close mm, not really uh, guadalajara is closer to here than, Texas. than than california okay yeah. okay yeah and so what made you think california well i, got, I have a friends family oh okay okay i have a few sisters living there okay cousins and a lot of family. That's natural then to, to go in that direction. Yeah. Where you got people that you know oh, yeah. and teach you the ropes. So were you doing CPA work in California? I was trying to, but I, I thought I was cheated because I was trying to, to do my, my bar exam, but I was told that I can do it. See, number one is number one here, Mexico, China, whatever. For accounting, doesn't really matter anything because the, the, uh, the uh, books that we were using at the Mexican University were books written here in the United States. So when I, when I was trying to do that, when I was trying to do that, uh, at first they told me, yeah, you got to uh, do the bar exam to be certified in California. 
and I remember I had to buy like uh, uh, one book was probably like three thousand pages mm. <laughs> that I have to remember, but everything was just basic what I knew. Yeah. So it was nothing new for me. And and they have the the uh, bar exam I believe twice a year on different cities on the state. And, and I, I remember perfectly I choose to do the exam in San Diego versus uh, Sacramento. And and there is only one date on San Diego and the other day was on Sacramento. Sacramento, I believe, was at the beginning of the year, the second or the third month of the year, and on San Diego was, uh, I believe, in November. Mm. So... I prepared myself for that for the test, and, and when I was getting ready to present my, my exam, you got to pay. That invalidate my my studies in Mexico. They said no, you can't. Oh, really? So they're saying that the classes you're taking in Mexico they were not valid in California. Wow! That I got to go to university here. So it was frustrating for me. Sure, I disappointed. mean, you think they would have told you that before? Ahead exactly of time. before, yes, like a year before. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So you've been studying for a full year before they, yes. they told you that? Yep. I can see how that gets frustrating. Yep. Did you try and to appeal that or anything? Or? No, 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 no. I have to I have to leave, so yeah. I got to work. And then I start working at a pizza place. So oh, okay, so you weren't they, even they, doing they, CPA anymore. They, no. I was trying to do uh, income taxes, which was very simple for me to do it. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know if you remember back then. They used to send you the little booklets. Yeah. Nothing was online. Mm -hmm. So you bring me your booklet, I cut the pages and do your forms. That was a piece of cake for me. And so it was a good money, but I, that was not what I wanted to do. And then plus that's only so many. So it's only three months a year. year. Yeah. yeah. So that's not enough to, no, to, to live right? off. No. Yeah. So but some people live out of it, you know. I know people who make a good living out of it, but that was not my so you end Mafia. up going to a, a pizza place? Yes. And so, what was the name of the pizza place? Was it a mom and pop or a chain? Uh, yes, no, it wasn't mom and pop. Okay. Two ladies, nice ladies. Okay. And is that where you started your culinary journey? Well, I started before because I have to go for myself, otherwise I will be starving to death. <laughs> Did you... Uh, I live by myself when I was in the university. Okay, okay. So I have to cook. Did you have uh, someone that was your mom or somebody at home? Oh, cook? my mom. Okay. Yeah, I learned from her for many years because... Uh, when I was a kid, I, I think I started cooking at the age of uh, 12. Because hmm. everybody was working except me. I got to go to classes at 2 o'clock. So either I cook and eat or I will be starving the, the whole evening. Okay. So I have to cook. <laughs> <laughs> so w was she the type of cook that made meals like you guys make now? Or oh, was yeah. she kind of... I got of a lot of recipes from her. Oh, really? Him, him, him written by her. Where did, she, where did she get this from? From her mother? Yes. Okay. So she grew up cooking. Then. Long spirits, yes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And so uh, you you start working at the pizza place. You got these. Did it ever dawn on you you'd end up taking this route, start opening a restaurant? Or was it just. Well, hey, I was trying, trying to, to buy the restaurant after a few months. The pizza place? Yeah. Okay. But the ladies didn't want to sell it to me. Oh, I see. And, and, and the funny thing was, you know, being who I was, good on numbers. The first thing that I noticed was like, you have a lot of uh, waste mm. and everything is money. Remember, yeah. I'm a CPA and I was doing audits and I was doing, I was financial consultant. Yeah. So everything was a penny for me, right? Yeah. Okay, here there's $3, $4, 5 6 10 At the end of the day, I said, well, they are throwing away like 40 bucks a day. Add it up. Sure. It's $1,200 a month. Yeah. So I asked the lady, hey, instead of uh, throwing that scrap away, can I keep it and make my lunch because I got to pay for lunch. Oh, I see. And everything was clean because I was making those pizzas. I know what it was in there. So I said, can I, can I make my lunch with that? Mm -hmm. So I will save a few bucks. I just buy for the uh, the pizza dough and that's it. Okay, yeah. So the first day that I made my own pizza with a scrap, the lady says, mm, smells very good. Can I have a slice? <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> you got to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you double what she was charging you. And, and then uh, it was funny because then couple of days later, hey, can you duplicate what you just did every day to sell the slices of that pizza? I said, yeah, why not? So you are doing by the slice? So I was doing, yes. The, the place was doing by the slice and, and, and the whole deal. 
So to make the long story short, uh, they asked me, what, how do we, what was the name? How, how do we call this pizza? I said, well, just Pizza Loca. I said, it's a Simple name, people yeah. know it? Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in there. So and, and about six months later, uh, I hear they open a new pizza place, somebody. And the name of the place was Pizza Loca. Oh, really? Were they affiliated with these ladies? Nope, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was a customer. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So was that kind of poking you a little bit to go, hey, maybe I need to push a little harder and start my own little deal? Because, I mean, people are already <laughs> loving your stuff. They're taking your ideas. Yeah, but What's no, next? That, 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 that my life took a little twist. Uh, I went to the security industry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you do the cameras, right? Is yes. that part of it? Yes. <laughs> so, what made you do that? Because that's a going CPA to cooking and then now security. Was it? Did you just kind of see? I guess that there was a need for something, and so you were filling that need, or was it something that you thought was just interesting and you wanted to try? Well, the need was money. Right. Right. The pizza place I was making the minimum wage, uh, which at that time I believe was like four dollars an hour or four twenty-five. Mm -hmm. And then I got a job offer to make the, do the double, eight, 850, doing uh, uh, data runs and fiber optics. I said, well, that's oh, interesting. Okay, okay. It's a challenge for me. I like challenges. Yep. So besides, it was more money and it was full time plus overtime. I said, well, I don't know anything about it. I didn't even know when they asked me, okay, uh, have you done this before? When I went to the interview, I said, never. Well, you want to work for us? You never done this. I said, yeah. <laughs> Nada. Can and, uh, you terminate this wire? They give me like a twenty-five pair. Now mm -hmm. I know what is it called, right? It's a twenty-five pay ca pair of, uh, cables, twenty-five pairs inside one cable. That every five pairs repeats the color. Okay. So for me, it was like okay. So you got five times. Color blue, five times color orange, five times color brown, slate, and and and, uh, and green. I went like, okay. You know what's funny is while you're telling, not to interrupt you, but while you're telling me the story, I'm seeing, as you're saying it, I'm seeing the CPA mind working, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's numbers again. You know, it, it was numbers for for doing the CPA. It was numbers when you were at the pizza place. It now it's numbers counting these fiber optic cables. It's very interesting to see you talk about it because I'm seeing I'm seeing your CPA background come back into play. So then I noticed that every five pairs there was like a little bunch with a with a strand again with a different color. So you got another five colors. Uh, okay, number one is blue. This is okay. I got it. So they gave me a tool. Do you know what this is? I said I have no idea. Never seen anything in my life. So I punched the cable and I brought it back to the uh, whoever was the project manager at that time of the, of the company. And he was, okay, you never done it. You finish this. And let me put a tester and see how you got it. So he put a tester and I got a perfect score. Oh, really? I said, your first time ever touching this tool, first time looking at this scale, I said, yeah. I was a professor, and then I was a CPA, and then I was a pizza maker. No, <laughs> I'm doing this. <laughs> so he says to me, well, I'll let you know. So I was driving back home, which was like a 20 minutes drive. And when I got home, I got a message on my answering machine. Remember, back then, oh, yeah, you got you, answering machines. You didn't and, know till you got home and had to... Push a button yeah. and listen or what? <laughs> yeah. So I didn't have the luxury of buying a, a cellular phone because they were brand new back then. They were very expensive. Oh, yeah. So They were in a big bag. Yeah, and big you had battery. To carry oh. <laughs> like 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. You no got to carry around. Case. Yeah. So I got home. I got a text message. Say, I mean, a, a voicemail says, uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow, 6 o'clock at the DWP building in uh, downtown L.A. You're hired. Bring your steel toe shoes and bring uh, these kind of tools. And I was like, 
steel toe shoes, what are those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have no idea what those were. So I called a sister of mine. And you probably didn't have the right tools either. I right? didn't have anything. Yeah. I was never a, a technical guy or a construction guy ever. And so I told my sister, hey, but I got to buy this. And I oh, don't worry, I'll take it. She was laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> Did she help you out? Yeah. Okay. She took me. I got my, all my gear. So next day I was 5.45 the job site, which was everything new to me. But I have a lot of fun because it was a lot of relaxing because you were working out pretty much. Mm. I was uh, one of the very few Mexican guys. So they, they were charging pretty much the heavy work to us. Yeah. I never cared because I learned from the past. I had a professor who was very pushy with me. and said, why he's pushing me so hard on the high school. You have no idea how much I appreciate him when I was at the university. That makes sense. Yeah. You, you, that makes sense. For me, it was everything very easy. You know, <clears throat> one thing that I think that happens nowadays is, is uh, we sell college to kids and we tell them, you guys are going to have a very difficult time being successful if you don't get your college degree. But I think one thing that needs to be pressed more to younger people is you're gonna have a hard time being successful if you don't check your ego and you don't work hard. Yes. Because I'm listening to you tell, tell me the story and I'm saying, here's a guy, here's a guy with a, a college degree. He's already spent years uh, as a professor, he spent years uh, running his company, he spent years holding seminars, you know, and then he starts over at a pizza place, you know, yep. that can for for somebody with for somebody with the wrong attitude, that's a slap in the face and it's a downgrade. Right. But with somebody with a good attitude, it's an opportunity, you know, and we don't always a lot of people think, well, they get their degree and give me the money. And it doesn't work that way because you still have to, you still have to prove that you can work hard, you can be accountable, you can be the type of person that is reliable, and that doesn't come from college. That comes from life experiences and having good teachers, whether they're parents or professors at school or somebody telling you the truth. Hey, life isn't going to be easy, so don't expect people to take it easy on you you know there's it's funny because my dad I always told people when we were younger dad was rough on us he was rough on us and uh just make sure we were accountable make sure that we we did what we were supposed to you know uh we were a representation of the family you know and so to always put your best foot forward and it's funny because <clears throat> When I took the lessons that he taught me and, and other people, you know, uh, teachers and people like that, uh, into the real world, I didn't struggle as much as other people who had it a little bit easier, you know. And so even even with the coronavirus last year, you know, that that kind of set you guys back a little bit, too, you know, because of not having the people come into restaurants or whatever. And. You adjusted your hours. You started doing the security thing again. And it's like it's a constant life is like a constant. Uh, it's constant motion and it's adapting. And it sounds like even up to this point, we haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes of it all. Not yet. But <laughs> it, it's like uh, you've learned to adapt at an early age and you never you never even though there may have been times where you lick your wounds, you never sat and felt sorry for yourself. You just. Progress forward. Progress forward. Yeah. I'm going to bite this taco. What is this taco? It's a pork belly gordita. Oh. On salsa tomatillo. I'm so on glad. A I'm so glad Nina's not here because she would want this. <laughs> Nina's delicious. <laughs> That's really good. Anyway, I'm sorry for interrupting you. But so where were we? You, you're going to eat your taco. I'm going to eat my taco. And now you're working for uh, the uh, security people. Well, it was a communications. Communication. F at first. And then uh, 
I was always having a lunch time in a, in a particular uh, place. And, and the guy asked me, hey, you are working in this blah, such, 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 such and things. And can you, can you do something for me? That, uh, what? Can you put a camera in my house? Mm. I'll tell him the camera. Well, maybe it's the beginning for your new career. Opportunity. So he, he we were joking, right? But it's, it's no big deal. You're, you're running all those cables. I said, yeah, you know what? The sculpture cable, I have the crane tools for that. Now I knew what to do because that was like a year after I started working in the communication company. And I said, yeah, yeah, why not? How much will you charge me? I said, no, nah, just feed me. You know, yeah. <laughs> I eat your food for free and I'll do the job for you. I said, no, I'll pay you some money. <clears throat> and at that time, I, I remember I did the first camera on his house. And of course, I never have experience about that. So I asked a friend, a friend of mine who was an electrician to help me run the power near to the camera and blah, 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 which we did it on, on, here, on his house. <clears throat> and then it looks very nice when I finished the job. I said, wow. It was easy for me. It was very nice. And then on top of that, he paid me like $200, I think. Mm -hmm. I worked for like two hours and I got 200 bucks. Said, wow. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's the business. That I gotta be <laughs> <Yeah. in. laughs> and then he called me later and said, hey, can you put one more? I said, yeah. But I don't have the equipment. You, get, you need to get the equipment for me. I said, well, I don't know where to get it or something. So I started looking on Jello pages and started making phone calls. And, and then I found the equipment. And I remember I paid like Close to 400 bucks mm. per car or camera back then. Very okay. expensive. So I got a camera and I told her how much it would cost. I said, yeah, I'd pay more for that one. Said, yeah. Get two. He told you to get two? Yeah. Okay. okay. So when I got two, the other guy said, well, I'm going to give you this one. You're going to pay only like 1100 bucks or, or $1,000 each. So yeah. I, this one, that's, I already told how much it cost and he gave me the money. So, well, I'm keeping $300 now. Mm -hmm. for doing nothing just for buying the equipment yeah and I did the cameras and then he gave me like another three four hundred bucks I said, wow how old were you at this time uh, I was like thirty one okay so yeah. still a young guy very young so next to where I was living was like a Cuban market a store you know like one of those little markets. Mm -hmm. And then they have an old black and white cameras, like two big. And I told him, I, I feel expert now, you know, I got three cameras. <laughs> all of looks very nice. <laughs> and I told him, hey, you want to change the cameras? I, I can do that for you. How much will you charge me? I said, well, I charge you just to replace them. You got the cables already in place. I use $50 per camera. Do it. You have to buy the equipment, and I charge fifty dollars per labor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how much per camera? I said, well, it's like three hundred dollars a camera. So I call a place. Hey, I need eight cameras, eight hundred fifty bucks. Oh wow! So, oh, I just got two thousand dollars. I said, yeah, this is a business. Remember, I'm coming from numbers. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I got four hundred bucks on labor, which <clears throat> took me like five minutes to replace every camera. So yeah, this is the business I gotta be in. So I went back to my friend, the guy who told me, maybe this is your new business. Yeah. To make the long story short, after a few years, I was well known all over the country. I was getting phone calls to do the camera system. Really? Even the federal government called me. So how were you getting, <clears throat> how were you getting notarized across the country? Who was spreading your name? Uh, word of mouth. I have no idea. I have no idea. I, the, the company that I started buying the equipment from, since they saw that I was buying a lot of equipment, the owner, hey, why don't you work for me as a subcontractor? I went, how much will you pay me? You know, I remember back then that the, the, the minimum wage was $4.25. What year was this? 1992. Okay, yeah. Because when okay. I got my first job at an engineering firm, it was 90, 97, 98? 
Oh, maybe even maybe later than that. It was like six dollars and twenty. Yes, it was already like six or eight dollars at that time. Yeah, it wasn't much. No, but back then it was for even half of it. So, and the guy says, "Well, I will pay you two hundred fifty dollars a day. I give you the contracts because you are making more jobs than my my people here. <coughs> you must be might be good. Maybe you are a good good guy." Yeah. It's okay. So I started doing work for the company while I was working on the other company because I got, I got a contract for the other company, the communication company, remember? Mm -hmm. Doing the wiring, the Cat5, the fiber. The contract that I was doing for DWP was for three years. And I finished the whole job in six months. Wow. So the, <coughs> the project manager, DWP, says, you're not going to make me look stupid. So he gave me a very nice office on the building. He was carrying a, a folder, a thick folder, I remember. One of those yellow folders mm -hmm. full of pages. And I said, oh, what's that? So said, this is your office and this is your assignment. So I opened the folder, <laughs> nothing but a blank white sheets of paper, hmm. nothing in it. This is what I want you to do. I want everybody to see you at the break room at nine o'clock, and whatever you do after that, I don't care. But I'm not gonna be looking stupid because I calculate the time for this particular project, and it was three years. But you knock it down six months. I have no idea how you did it. I said, okay, and so <laughs> don't worry, you're gonna get paid for it. <laughs> you're gonna get paid for it. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So he said, he said, basically, you got a sweet gig because he was too arrogant to say, I miscalculated how fast things could get done. No. No? I don't like to waste my time while I'm working. So I was working at a different speed. And I learned that in the past because when I was doing jobs for the uh, a chain of hotels, Marriott hotels, mm -hmm. I, I did a, a lot of security cameras for a lot of hotels. Uh, the person who was hiring me only the first time asked me for a bid. When they saw what I did and the time that took me to finish my job, I never asked again. He never asked me again for a bid. He says, hey, we're going to open a hotel in this place. I'll let you know when the place is ready for you to do the system. After a few years, because I worked for them for a lot of years, he told me, you know why I keep hiring you? I said, well, you tell me. Besides you doing a good job, because whatever you do on two weeks, the other companies were taking six months. That's crazy, right? Yep. And that, that goes to show how things, there's so mm -hmm. much inefficiency in how some people work. Well, they call it job security. <laughs> that's what they call it. I call it yeah. inefficiency, but that's yeah. what they call it. Job security. You're exactly right. You know, it's kind of like, well, hey, we're getting paid this amount to do this job in this amount of time. Yes. We're going to make it last that long. Let's use it. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's... But in my case, it was different because that the faster I get the job done, the more jobs I can knock down sooner. Yeah. So it wasn't more money for me. Mm -hmm. So for you, it was more beneficial to... Because you were, you were getting paid, you were looking at, instead of saying, I'm getting paid per hour, you were looking at it more so as, I'm getting paid per project. Exactly. And as soon as I knock this one out and go to the next one, that's yeah. more money for me. And if I can do 20 projects in a year as opposed to 10, yep. that's a better year. And it was a time where uh, I have to tell, I have to tell a, a customer, well, you... You want me to do, to do the job for you? Uh, I'll be done probably in the next uh, five months. You can wait for me. It's fine. Yeah. That's how busy we were. That's good. That's a yeah. good problem to have. We run into that every now and then too, where it's kind of like, well, you know, our, our, we're, our calendar is full up to this point. We can't get to it to here. Nope. But you know what? It, at the same time, you getting to it in six months it's probably going to be just as fast as somebody getting on it now and finishing in six months, yep. you know, just depending on what, how large the project is. Yeah. So you built a name for yourself 
did government projects and did you travel a bunch then since we, oh, people yeah. were hiring you all oh, over yeah. the country? Yeah, working seven days a, a week. And did you have a team or were you by yourself? No, no, no. I got a, I got a company. Okay. I opened a company. Okay. Yeah. I have a three crews. Well, I was different because some companies, they assign like a five guys on a crew. My crews were three guys. You don't okay. need more than three. Somebody standing around. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got to be efficient. Yeah. And they knew because they were getting paid and they never complained. I guess I treat them right. Yeah. And you know that. And the funny thing, people that I was, uh, a guy who was my, my, my supervisor on the communication company, he was working for me. Oh, Later. really? Yeah. <laughs> hey, he knows a good thing when he sees it. Yeah. You know, it's funny because it's, <clears throat> at times it's hard to uh, hire people that are going to work hard. You know, it, it's easy to, there's a whole bunch of guys that want to take five months to do a job. Yeah. There's very few guys that want to knock it out as quick as possible. Yep. And I got a buddy of mine who's a home builder and uh, he's real good to his guys. He, I think he learned that from his dad. Uh, but he pays him, He tells me he pays him every Friday. So I pay him every Friday. He said, even if I don't have money from that project, I pay him every Friday. He said, because they know I'm going to take care of them. Yeah. And when there's a problem and they have other contractors they can go work for that week. But if I have a problem, he says, they come and, and help me. Yeah, because they know I'm going to take care of them, and I mean, that's there's something to be said for that. You got you got to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I got to be cooking. Yeah. <laughs> While I was on the road, so that was part of part of it too. Everything. <laughs> so let me ask you this: I guess some time goes by, and uh, what made you th what made you deviate, or not really deviate, because you still do the cameras, you know, camera installations and things like that. What may, or was cooking a passion for you, or was cooking something that you just kind of went into after a while? Did you get? Did you? No, get? it was always a passion for me. I wanted. I wanted to remember. I told I wanted to buy the pizza place, mm -hmm. but they didn't sell it to me. So I wanted to open a restaurant myself. But then I was married back then, and my ex-wife, she never supported me in a restaurant. Mm. She said, "No, that's a lot of work." Yeah. Yeah, but but I can. Do this. I can do this because we used to go well like, hard to a place and need the food in there. It was incredible and was very inexpensive. I said, we can make a killer with this. And she never, she never supported me that. Then things happen in life. You got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. Yeah. I moved to a little town called Paso Robles. Where's that? Paso Robles is in the central coast of California. It's okay. a wine county. Okay. Yeah, they have about probably, I don't know right now how many winers, but uh, my, my calculation is between two or 300 wineries in there. Wow, that's a bunch. Yes. A lot of wineries from Napa were going south to Paso Robles because the weather conditions and the uh, soil that is there and all the quality of the wines that they were making. So they start buying wineries in there and buying land and, and the town start growing on, on that field but I went there to learn about wines because my doctor prescribed me a glass of wine on my meals because when I got divorced I was suffering for a lot of stress yeah so well you cook and you have a nice glass of wine and and back then I didn't want to cook you know because I got two kids that were living with me 12 and 14 so the first year I started taking my boys all the time to restaurants and ask for my glass of wine. And I don't like the wine. Because most of the restaurants, they, they pour by the glass the low quality type of wines. You know? mm -hmm. Not the best wines. They're looking to the sell cheapest. the bottles. Yes. And the bottles were expensive. So, and this comes the numbers again. At the end of the year, I got my... my Financial reports on my savings. I said, what the heck? I spent too much money going out. Hell no. So I moved to Paso Robles. Went to, into the wineries. Started knowing more about wines and buying my own wines and then cooking at home. 
for my boys and, and myself. And I got to cook three different menus because everybody was different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny because my mom would always make um, fideo. I hate fideo. <laughs> and uh, I remember asking, Mom, make me something different. And my dad would go, you eat fideo or you don't eat? And I wasn't not going to eat, so I'd eat fideo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> I ha I have to do that three different menus and 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 then also the other thing that the doctor told me that I have to eat salmon. Oh, okay. So salmon for me was not good experiences at all in any in every restaurant that I went to. Mm. Very fishy. Very. Did you grow up eating salmon at all? No, I don't. No. So. That was the reason for me to open this restaurant with a name. The name not supposed to be Salomon, it's supposed to be Salmon. And on the middle, it's supposed to be a shrimp with a head. Mm. But when my older son saw the logo, because he, he called a friend of his to make a design, which uh, he charged like two rand, and, and said, well, look, the shrimp looks like, you know, why, why don't you live like a Salomon? I said, well, you could have saved me two thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he thought, no, that was a two thousand dollar idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 leave us we left us Solomon. <laughs> we left like Solomon, and because uh, the Salmon name was thank you, thank you was because uh, that to tell me gotta eat Salmon, and I was ah, I don't like Salmon, and it's not like I didn't like Salmon. My experience at the restaurants, I guess, uh, they didn't prepare the salmon to yeah. give you very uh, grateful taste. You know, it always was tasting like fishy, like dry, or, or it seems like it's a meaty fish. So if it's not done well, you're right. It's so thick, it's almost dry and just bland. Yes, in the middle, you know, the, like the flavor doesn't. Whatever they cook on, if they don't do it well, it doesn't penetrate the fish. I guess. Because I've experienced that, too. So I started making salmon ceviche. Okay. I was going to the uh, a fish place near Paso Robles. It's called Morro Bay. They cut a salmon the same day, and you buy it. So it's nothing fresher than that. Mm -hmm. The problem is the price. Mm. When you want it the same day cut, you got to pay, like, I think uh, they were charging, like, $30 a pound. Really? Next day... Oof was down to twenty dollars third day down to 12. why don't ask me why i don't know why but this, this is how it was well i'd imagine i'd imagine daily they're getting fish uh, or you know fish ship shipments so that's not going to stop coming no. so i'd imagine after like the third day okay now we need to get rid of it yes. you know because there's where it's back but it everywhere over. else you can buy a good salmon at that time for me it was good salmon at that time at costco for like Seven ninety nine a pound, mm. so it was a big discrepancy. Yeah, but then one day I said, you know what? If I'm gonna eat salmon, it has to be good. If this costs thirty bucks a pound, I'm gonna try. It. Sure. So I get a piece of salmon, my home, made my ceviche, but I make I put my own twist on my ceviche. At that time, I had a little bit of a peach in it, and it was incredible. So everybody was loving my ceviche. Hmm. And what you were selling it there at a little restaurant? No, I was eating it. Oh. I was not sell. I was not in the restaurant business yet. <laughs> <laughs> it was just my cook and everybody. Hey, let's do barbecue in my house, but you got to make your own uh, salmon ceviche for all of us. Yeah. And they would just bring um, like chips and beer, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> or cheap wines. Oscars bring in the food. You know, yeah. Bring snacks. No, they were bringing good steaks. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to give it to them. My only condition later was, okay, you bring me the wine that I like. Oh. Because now I become more more into wine addicted, if you want to call it mm -hmm. that way. I don't call it addicted. I just call it, I, I get a better taste about wine. Sure. Because the more you learn, that you pass certain lines or levels, and you don't want to go back. See what I mean? Well, and then you reach another level. Then, yeah. Oh, hell no. I, I'm going to stick to this one. You got to also stick to the sticker price. Well, the same thing to be said with it for food. Yes, the you know, same thing. Once you've had, once you've had a certain meal, it's hard to go backwards. Yes, because you you've 
you, there's so it seems like there's so much involved in your mouth, your taste buds, right? Your senses, your nose, the texture. You know, food and drink uh, leaves an impression in your brain. Yep. You know, and when you can have top tier food, top tier drink, and you're getting those senses met, you know, it's hard to go back. You know, yep. it's hard to go get a steak from. I don't know, Denny's, like we talked about. <laughs> <You know? coughs> so I get it. Yeah, that's 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 the part that has been very difficult for me running this restaurant. You know, a, a lot of people doesn't understand the cost of the quality products. Yeah, they complain. Wow, I got to pay three bucks per taco. Uh, wow, that taco should be like seven bucks. Yeah. See, like for example, right now, everything is taking a, an, an, an increase, right? Like my ribeyes. Mm-hmm. Oh, everything's getting more expensive. Oh, yeah. The ribeyes. Uh, I still sell my ribeye in 1995 when I'm paying $60. If I increase the price, people still complain. You know? yeah. If I stick with the same price, why, why is it so expensive? I said, you have any idea what you're talking about? Yeah. Like the pork belly. The pork belly that I use is organic pork belly. Oh, gross. <laughs> See what I mean? It's, it's no, not good. like you got to you got to stick with a quality that sure. you believe in. And, 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 and you know what's funny is is I think you're going to find and I mean you're in this industry you know already. I think people there's fewer people going, man that steak's too expensive, I'm not going there again. There's yeah. a lot more people going, that's a good steak. I'm and going back. Yes. I'm going back. Yes. And you know what? It, if I got to save a little extra this week or, you know, we, we got to change the way we do things, that way we can afford nice meals, people do it. It's you know? worth it. It's funny because it's it's that mentality where most people can afford what they want when they want if they want it. Yes. You know, and a lot of people say, we'll sit there and go, well, I, I can't afford the, I, I, I couldn't make the house payment. You know, I couldn't make the light payment. But I got a cell phone, and my kid has the latest video game, and we have cable, and my kids have cell phone. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, well, hang on. Where's your pri- that's your pri- That shows your priority. You know? And for most people, I think they're going to go, and we talked about earlier how it seems like fewer and fewer people are cooking at home. Yes. You know? And, and I think for a lot of people, when they taste a good meal, when they, when they, you've got a really small restaurant here. And I tell everybody, I, I always say the food's amazing, but I love the atmosphere. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, every chair's different, every table's different, every plate's different, every fork is different. And it's, it's nice because it reminds you it's comfortable. You know, when I grew up at my parents' house, we didn't have a matching forks. We didn't have matching knives. You know, the furniture was all different. It reminds me of uh, comfort. You know, and it's funny because when you go to like, let's say a Myron Steakhouse or you go to, you know, one of those other big steakhouses, you know, the atmosphere is geared different. You know, everything's nice and brand new and matches and, you know, curtains and it's very stale. You know, Uh, when you come to a place like yours, it's very comforting. You know, it's it's like I can stay here all day. Yep. You know, I can relax. You know, I don't I don't feel like I like I'm like the waiters waiting to get me out of here. You know, it's it's a it's a different atmosphere and it triggers something. And I think that also contributes to the overall experience. Right. So now you have a great atmosphere. Yeah. You have good food. You have good drink. You know, you guys are good hosts. And it's a, it's a whole experience, you know, and you don't get that at those places that like the Myrins or whatever. They else. just want your money. They want your money. That's it. You know, the faster they flip the table, the better for them. Yeah. Yeah. Here, it's the opposite. Yeah. And and uh, I th- that's part of why I love coming here. You know, I mean, I like giving you a hard time, but at the same no. time, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like I said, it's it's comfortable. You know, it's uh it's a restaurant, but it's kind of my grandmother's house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, we didn't go to Mexico very often, but my family has has family in Mexico, and every now and then when I was kids, we'd go down there like once a, once a year or twice a year, and 
it's very comforting. You know, everything's everything's uh, inviting, and that's how this place is. You feel welcome. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have I have friends of mine that they came here a long time ago. I'm gonna need it to go box later, man. I, I'm telling you, I'll pay double. I know you told me I gotta pay double for the go box. <laughs> but I have some friends that had come here a long time ago, and uh, they put it on Facebook, and I saw the name, and I was like, that's weird. And I never paid attention to them. I saw the food, and don't get mad at me. But uh, it reminded me of uh, something you eat at the Pearl, right? Uh, quality, good ingredients, beautiful on the plate. And uh, But my thing is, like, Nina hates it. I don't like the Pearl. I don't want to go to the Pearl, you know? To me, it's it's overdone, and, and a lot of people love the pearl, and that's great. Yeah. For me, I don't like a lot of people. You know, I don't want to be at downtown. I don't want to do the whole tourist thing, but I do want to. I, I look at that picture and I go, I do want to have that experience. You know, and then we came across you guys, and I was like, holy shit, I'm getting the pearl food, ish, but I don't have to deal with the touristy stuff. You know, and. Uh, when I see people come here, even when you know when you guys are packed, when you're not busy, you see people come in, and they look so calm and relaxed. They look like how I feel, you know. And uh, I know you guys do the uh, the dinners and things, oh, the yeah. wine experiences yeah. too. So I mean, I, I I hate to say it, but I feel like everybody should come here. But once they do, they're gonna run me off, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and I know right now you're thinking, well, get the hell out of here. Send the yeah, people over. <laughs> yeah, we need people. Send the people you over. Know, now that you mentioned about the wine dinners, a lot of people don't don't understand my 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 point of view about my, about my wine dinners. Why you make these wine dinners when you don't make any money? I'm not gonna tell you why I don't make money. I'm not gonna tell you why because sometimes. For a lot of people, it's been considered a lot of money, $100 a person. But when you come to my dinner and you see what you are getting for $100, it's like, what? Is this guy an idiot or what? And, and the way I, I, I think is, for me, I don't advertise my wine dinners. It's just for my... Man. Inviting you? Mm-hmm. No. You, oh, me just invite. inviting you. Okay, because I've never been invited, so I don't know. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's my way to give back a little bit to my customers. Why I say that? For example, most of my wine dinners, well, all of them, but but some of them, one glass of wine that I give you, just one glass of wine. Is worth it about hundred fifty dollars. Wow, one. Wow, <laughs> and you pay only hundred bucks. And people that say know that, and, and and I don't say that to them. I only say to the people, hey, if you like any of the wines that you are enjoying this evening, look it up online. Whatever price you find online for that bottle is how much you're gonna pay here. And not a lot of people do that. You say, eh. But people who does it's like, what the heck? So some people say, okay, can I have a bottle to go? I say, yeah. And how do you pour this wine? Can I have a glass? Yeah, you have another glass, but you got to pay for it. And what is worth it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like uh, two months ago, I remember perfectly because this, this one, a lot of customers asked for additional glasses of wine, but the cheapest wine was $50 a glass. Yeah. Can I have another glass? I guess they were feeling uncomfortable me giving them so much. Like, that's the way I want to see it. They say, oh, let, let's buy another glass of wine so he can make money. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I think people want you to. You know, it's like uh, uh, during during Corona, I didn't come over nearly as often as I'd like to. But I told Nina, I'm like, uh, Oscar's open. I'm going to order lunch and dinner. You know, yeah. order two plates. And you did it. And, and, it's, and it's like... One thing, like everybody lived through the through the pandemic, and I guess it's still going on, but everybody's living through it. But it's like there's some things that should be 
successful, right? Uh, Notre Dame football, Chicago Bears, and your restaurant. You know, it's good food. It's quality people. It's quality drink. And it's like until everybody realizes that, you know, I think that the people who understand that want to support it, you know, and they want it to continue, you know, and uh, and that was kind of part of the scary part through the through the virus was or the pandemic last year and even this year as well is uh, you started seeing your favorite places closed down. You know, yeah. you started seeing your your favorite mom and pop place closed down. And it's like, you know, after a while, even with you guys, you know, before, you know, everybody was aware of like the the changed hours, which are now Thursday to Sunday, right? That's correct. You know, it was kind of like, oh, it's Monday, but Oscar's not open. It's Tuesday, but Oscar's not open. And I even I even brought uh, our department manager, Lisa, Lisa Jester over here that one time. And I felt like a total asshole because I didn't even pay attention to the, I, Nina. Nina hates me. She, she'll tell me. She'll tell you people to their face. She hates me. But because I always think, ah, I always I always assume rules don't apply to me. Right. And so uh, I don't think about things. I just do them. You know, I, I even tell people I've never seen Oscar's menu. I've never seen Solomon uh, menu. I just say, hey, make me something good. Or, hey, I want something with X, Y and Z in it. And Oscar makes it happen. But anyway, so I was talking to Lisa and I was kind of like, hey, you know, let's go to lunch. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some things. And and uh, she's already want to go. And I was like, well, well, I know a place we'll go. And so I called you. And I was like, I was like, hey, uh, uh, you're open. What time are you open tomorrow? Because we're gonna come a little early. And I'm, and you're like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll be open. And so we got here, and, and I walked in. We sat. Nobody's here. And I was like, man, poor Oscar. He's he's not getting any business today, you know. So we ordered food, and I think we even had dessert, and and uh, it was a full meal, yep. you know. And then you're like, oh yeah, no problem. We're we're closed today, but you know, no problem. And so I was like, son. I was like, you're closed today? And you were like, yeah. I was like, how come you didn't say anything? He's like, because you called me and you wanted to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so Oscar came and opened the restaurant just so me and Lisa could have lunch. All this day off. But Yep. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff, Oscar, that, that's a uh, quality people, man. You know, and and you're a quality dude. And you have a, a, a quality restaurant. And uh, I think the people who know it know. And there should be more people to know about it, you know. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, I understand, and I don't understand in totality. You know, we've kind of touched on some things, but you had this long journey that's brought you to this little bitty place, you know, next to what is that over there? The flea market. The flea market, uh, Bus Biff Buses. Busby or whatever it is, Bussy, Bussy, and uh, uh, it's like this whole long thing that brought you here. But it's like this is this is where you can, I guess, display your your talent, you know, because it is a talent, you know. It's a easy passion. To, and, and your passion, you know, because it's easy to throw something together and put salt and pepper on it, you know. But even like this meal here, it's like it's like I told you before. There, there's in, there's ingredients that I wouldn't buy. I don't like that stuff, yep. you know. But when you put it together, it's totally different, you know. And uh, Man, I'm excited. I'm excited. I know you guys are looking to move to New Braunfels, right? That's correct. And when is that happening? I hope so. Now. Soon? We've been waiting a year now. A year? So is construction done already or no? Yes. Okay. It's just a matter of uh, to finish the plumbing, the floor, and that's it. Oh, really? So you're hoping to get in by maybe early next year? Uh, no, it has to be. Uh, oh, this year? By the end of this month or, or, or yeah. And, and where is it going to be located? It's on uh, FM 306. Uh, 306? Yeah. Okay, that's a busy road. And 35, that. yeah. That's Hijo. a busy road. Hijo. So let's, let's back up a little bit because I kind of got uh, kind of got sidetracked. You're not going to take this home. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. That's really good. So explain to everybody what's in that taco. Well, it's not a taco. It's a gordita. Gordita? It's a oh, pork belly. I, I love gorditas. That's good. It's a pork belly, chicharron, on tomatillo sauce. Tomatillo sauce? Yes. That is good sauce. Oh. And is that on the menu regular? No? No. Nope. It, is, it is now? 
<laughs> it can be. I tell you what, that gordita is really good. Uh, normally, I burn through food, right? You put a plate in front of me, and I burn through it. And uh, for being the size that it is, it's probably, what, four inches, five inches in diameter, uh, mm. the, the gordita. Mm. In the, but the flavor, the flavor is amazing. And it's called already. And it's still amazing. And then this was the Migas. Puercas. Puercas. With uh, sunny side eggs on it. Delicious. This is going on. So we'll, we'll wrestle over this mm -hmm. if you want to wrestle. But. No. So we get back to um, mm -hmm. California. Kind of explain to me how you end up heading to Texas. And. I was afraid you would ask me that question. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Let me tell you. You'll see why. <laughs> I have a theory on people moving in from California. California right now is a, is a rough place to be in because of politics. But I, this is my theory. They should allow anybody from California, New York, to move here to Texas. They just can't vote for 20 years. That's my theory. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so explain to me. Well... We, we all know that a lot of uh, people move from California to here because of the, the living cost or the cost of living. Mm -hmm. You have a house that you purchased in California for, I don't know, eighty dollars $100,000 a few years back. Now it's worth $1.5 million. It's expensive. You are struggling to do the payments. They say, hey, they sell a house, they cash out, they buy a house here for three, four hundred thousand dollars. They still have uh, a lot of money for in them the, to the do bank. or for not to do anything for a few months or a few years. My case is a little different. My case, I'm not saying that I was not struggling there, okay? I'm not going to be that kind of guy. Hey, yeah, I can't believe, no. But the reality has to be told. The truth has to be told. And the truth was, remember I told you, I always wanted to have a restaurant. And my ex-wife never supported me in my restaurant. So there was not only one or two times, but there were like five times that after we got divorced, we were still trying to make it work, but didn't work. Sure. So I was moving to different cities, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. You're trying to find, you're trying to find was, a new start. Yes. See, we talk Thank about you, good brother. wines. Let's enjoy a nice sip of a good wine. What is this again? This is a very nice, Cuvée, but it's a Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, but it's in a steak Cuvée. It's not your typical Pinot Noir. Okay. It's a little, not too pricey, but it's a little pricey. But remember I told you, you just move to a different level, you don't want to go back. Okay, so you're ruining me right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, babe. This is the a toast. <laughs> That is good. Oh, yeah. That's very good. So the, la the last town that we tried to make things work, work out was in Paso Robles. Okay. And I just asked a simple question. Why do you keep following me if you don't want to stay with me? And then there was an answer. Well, you know, the only business that I will never support you will be a restaurant, and the only place that I will never move will be Texas. Oh, she gave you the game plan. <laughs> <laughs> And then I had a friend, I say I had, because unfortunately he passed away two years ago. He was a very good friend of mine. I met him uh, doing security service for him. He, he was a retired detective. 
and uh, I was doing a lot of jobs for detectives, doing video surveillance. The personal and, homes kind of thing? No, 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 no. Business. Oh, okay. High, big business, like refineries, like... Uh, oh, gotcha. Huge corporations, you know. Even for the... Uh, for a unique branch of the... I'm not supposed to say this, but hey, they don't know who, who I am. <laughs> <laughs> for a specific branch of the Department of State, I did a security for them. Okay. That's how my name was well known in the security wow. industry. Yeah. So you would have had that had all kinds of clearances me. too. Oh yeah, I did. Wow. I did a federal bill in the branch of LA. Wow. Yeah. No, I didn't have to go through the security, the scrutiny at all. Hmm. So anyways, he, he was always telling me, because he was from here, from Texas. He was living here in, I believe on, Cibolo, or I think he was living in Cibolo. And he was like, man, get rid of everything in California when he knew that I was divorced. Just, just move here. You, you can have a very nice life. You don't have to worry about anything. You can buy a huge property and blah, 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 blah. I never listened to him until the last conversation that I was telling you about that I had with my, with my ex. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I called him, hey, Mark. His name uh, was Mark Rangel. Guess what? What? I'm heading to you now. <laughs> I'm going to buy a house. I'm uh, heading to San Antonio. And then he started laughing. He had like a very loud laugh. He was a cowboy fan. <laughs> I know. Something wrong with him. <laughs> And uh, I said, where are you laughing at? I'm driving to California right now. I said, what? I don't know anybody in Texas. You told me to come. <laughs> I'm about 10 hours away. I was driving, right? I don't know where to go. And he said, let's live in Arizona. He says, no, <laughs> we're right across. Mm. We, we never knew. I said, where are you at? I said, well, I'm, I'm, I think I was not already, already past El Paso, I think. He said, well, I'm, I'm getting to Phoenix right now. So we were kind of far already. He said, well, I don't know what to do. I was counting on you. And what are you going to do? I said, well, I, I'm going to buy a house. Okay. Go buy a house on Shirt, Cibolo, or New Braunfels. Don't buy in the south of San Antonio. Don't buy in San Antonio. <laughs> okay, why? You just don't do that. Go to New Braunfels. Let's make it that the first choice, New Braunfels. Or go to the Dominion or, or uh, Bernie. Yeah. Those are nice places. Oh, yeah. Okay. So my first choice, I think, I, the first house that I went to see, because I call, I remember that I had a number for another friend that normally, uh, during that time, that person was here. That person lives in Mexico, but they got a house here. And, and, and okay. during that time, they were, they were here in, in uh, San Antonio. No, uh, I think it's in Universal City, I believe. Mm-hmm. So I called a number to see if I was lucky, and I was lucky enough. Yeah, I'm here in Texas. I said, "Well, good. <laughs> Guess <too>. what? <laughs> I'll be there, and I I need you to show me where these areas are because I'm planning on buying a house. Okay, yeah, no problem. Where are you staying? I said, I stay in this hotel. I said, No, 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 no. You cancel the reservation. You're gonna stay in my house. Say, oh, thank you. And the first place that I went was Bernie. Gated community, nice, beautiful home. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it was God or, or what happened, but that day, I don't know if you were here in July 2016. Yeah. There was a big storm. Mm-hmm. I mean, huge. It was raining like, what the hell is going on here? So I was looking to the house, beautiful house, and I said, yeah, I like this house. And it was only, at that time, I think they were asking me for like 500000 I offered four fifty, And they were about to say yes, and then the, the water started pouring down. And then the, the, the broker said, well, we need to get out of here. Said, Why? Because otherwise we're going to get stuck. stuck for like three hours. What do you mean? Yeah. 
it was on a corner with a lot of streets where kind of a downhill. Mm -hmm. I said, well, this street gets closed down when it pours a lot of rain like this. I said, always? I said, and then she said, yeah. I said, okay, never mind. I don't mind this house. <laughs> I don't want to be in a place where I'm not able to go out when it's raining. Sure. See what I mean? And that was mm, the reason why I didn't purchase the house. But it was a beautiful house. I yeah. like it. But just that moment, I said, yeah. Perfect timing. Yes. You know what? No. Let's go to New Braunfels. Mm -hmm. And I, I used, the person wanted me to buy a house on um, Cibolo. And also... They took me to another place. This is very inexpensive here. You can buy a house brand new for, I think it was like $170,000. Um, uh, I'm not sure it was Concord. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Concord. Uh, they said, ah, and let's go to New Brambles. So I went to see the homes in New Brambles and I like the house. And I said, well, this is it. Yeah, it cost me $100,000 nice. more, but I like it better. Yeah. And that's where I'm living. That's good. Yeah. New Braunfels is real nice. And especially mm -hmm. traffic wise, you know, staying in between. This area has grown so much. Oh, yeah. yeah a lot. It's you grown a no lot idea. in the past few years. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they're nice areas. They're good schools. You know, they have good communities. So uh, being able to live there and being able to work here and then eventually you'll be working in New Braunfels. You know, that's a that's a great place to be. So when you came, I got a question for you, and uh, it's pretty personal, but oh, shit. when you came, did you have the kids with you, or were they with the mom? When I came here to Texas, he was already with the mom, but the other, the other, I got my older son and the youngest. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's, it's funny because I always, I always ask kind of questions like that, because <clears throat> like I told you, my dad uh, has five kids. Three different mothers. So I always tell everybody dad was a man. But uh, <laughs> the little joke with us is <clears throat> somehow different things happen with each woman in different scenarios. <clears throat> but all the kids ended up with dad. And so uh, dad ended up raising all the kids, you know. And uh, it's funny because that's pretty rare. You know, it's pretty rare when things like that happen. Because typically they go with mom or, or they want to be with mom and and uh but things happen things happen differently so uh, i always find it interesting when when kids grow up with dad because uh, that's how we grew up you know it was all with dad and uh so we're all you, you do yeah yeah he grew up with me so it's very similar you know and uh I, I i just find it interesting i find it interesting that uh you know i guess dad had help raising the five kids but it's funny because now he's he turned 75 on the 5th and uh, he's the nucleus to everything you know so even though we all kind of have different mothers you know we all surround ourselves around dad you know and he's kind of the center of everything just because that's that's the way we all got raised but i always yeah. find that pretty interesting find that pretty interesting so you get to texas and when does this place come open were you able to get it right away? Four months later. Four months? Yep. Because I was already minded. You mm -hmm. know, my mind was already set to open a restaurant with good wines and good food. Yeah. Because that's what I always wanted to have when I go to a restaurant. Good food and good wine. And being a person why was your, that... Why was your ex against the restaurant thing? She just didn't think it'd be profitable? No. I don't know. Maybe she was thinking that she got to go and work with me. Oh, I see. But I, I doubt it because she never worked. When she was very married with me, I was able to support her, yeah. support the whole, the whole family without the need of her working and, and help out in the house. I want her to take care of the babies. You know, because even just in talking to you now, it's it's interesting because, like, I, we hear the different, I guess, jobs that you had and experiences you had in different locations that those took place in. And, you know, I always tell my buddy Bo and my buddy Trey, you know, when when things get tight or, or work slow or, you know, we're worried about money, you know, I always kind of say, uh, uh, it's kind of silly, but I kind of say, uh, uh, winners win and losers lose, man, you know? And mm -hmm. I always tell them, you know, we will figure out a way to make it happen. Oh, yeah. You know, 
We'll figure it out. We, we may not be easy. It may struggle. We may have to go work at a job we don't want to for a little while, but we won't fail, you know, because we're not we're not geared that way, you know. And to be able to see the different steps that you've taken to get to to your passion, you know, it it's a uh, it's a good example of a hey, winners win, you know. And it's not always a pretty run. It's not always a pretty uh, adventure, you know, but but when you're passionate about it and when you care about that, those kinds of things, and you have the work ethic that you do and the mentality that you do, you know, nobody's perfect by any means. But to be able to say, you know what, wherever you put me, wherever you make my starting line happen, I'm going to finish, you know, and you can put it. Three feet from the finish line, or you can put it in the middle of the fucking desert. Yep. But I'm going to finish, you know, and that's the mentality that I see that you have as well, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, regardless of, of of where your starting line is, you're going to finish, man. So oh, that's yeah. why that's oh, what's yeah. exciting about you, you know, and it's, ex- I, you know. I'm too stubborn. I guess. Well, they're stubborn and there's, there's, there's something to be said for stubborn people, you know, the part of people saying you know, uh, well, he was somebody was successful because they never gave up, you know. But you know who else is successful? It's somebody who doesn't know when to quit, you know. <laughs> yep. It's, it's, uh, they're coming from two different places, but they end up at the same, right, the yeah. same place. Yep. Yes, indeed. One more, Dino? Oh, no, I'm, I'm still full here. You want some drink? That's for, drink it, man. This is sweet. Yeah, you'll like it. Mix it. You can mix it, or you can you can have it straight. Or I, I'm just telling y'all, this is this is level ten food and drink right here. G beam hum, honey is negative two, but you're gonna like it. <laughs> so Oscar brings all this amazing food and drink to the table, and I bring Jim beam honey. That's like three gallons for $6. Yeah, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> hey, I told you I got a concession stand palate. <laughs> oh, shit. We talk about you bringing a, a bottle of Blue Label. This is what you came up with. <laughs> hey, that's Blue Label to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to this this high end. No. This, I, is, this, I, is, this is normal here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Oscar. I've had a. I've enjoyed our conversation. Uh, do you have anything else you want to share? I think I, I say more than <laughs> I should. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that. So right now you're located. What's your address? If somebody looked you up, what is your physical address here? Here is one eight seven eight zero Interstate Highway thirty five North. Okay, and if you're going northbound, like from San Antonio to Austin. I forget the exit, but it's you 177. 177 exit, and it's going to be on your right, right after the Bussy uh, flea, uh, market. flea Market. Yes. And so your new location is going to be in New Braunfels, but we're new not Braunfels, there yet. No, in a few weeks. Okay. And you can also look them up online as yes. Salomon. 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 S A L O M O N. Restaurant, and that'll pop up on Google. You're open right now. Uh, Thursday to Sunday? Thursday through Sunday, yes. Thursday through Sunday, breakfast, lunch, and then and Sunday. Sun, Sunday is like a, whatever you want from okay. 9 to till 3. And the food's amazing. And so do you guys ever have to, you, you ever have a night where you got to do reservations or just walk in all the time? Uh, right now it's walking all the time with very few exceptions. Okay. You and when is your next uh, uh, wine and dinner? Oh, this is a good one. When is it? Today? No, next Saturday. <laughs> Next Saturday. That's going to be the 20th. My birthday. Oh, it's, it's your birthday on the 20th? Yes. Mine is uh, the 17th. So, I mean, yeah. I won't be here for it because I'm throwing a birthday party down south. Oh, uh, shame on you. It's going to be... I'm uh, not invited. Well, you're invited, but you apparently got your own thing going on. But Not uh, on the 17th. No, no, on the 20th. <laughs> on the 20th. Oh, okay. But, uh, so, November 20th. Yeah. And what do people do if they want to come to this? Do they need to call you and reserve a seat? They got to pay. Oh, they got to pay. Oh, or are yeah. you doing invitation only right now? Because I'm throwing it out there like anybody can come. But we're still doing invitation. Not anybody, yes. Okay. I have to know him first. So you you need to come have lunch or dinner here with Oscar and the good people at Salomon. 
Uh, I need before. to have that feelings from you. Yeah. Knowing that you don't have a bad vibe. You know what? I like that because I like that idea. Just because it's ex- it's exclusive, and not any just anybody can be there. Because and it's just my birthday. I'm gonna celebrate my birthday. It's basically your birthday party. Yes. Okay. So people doesn't know what kind of wines I'm gonna serve. And it's it's a big table. Yes. It's uh, lots of folks, yes. and that's why it's exclusive. Because I guess so have- far I have a. Uh, 21 or 23 people sign up. Already. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and so do you do them once a month? or Once a month. Okay. Once a month. So if you want to get into this exclusive party, you're probably not going to make the birthday one. You need to come have dinner. You'll never know. Lunch or breakfast. Yeah. Meet Oscar, shake some hands. Yeah. And uh, enjoy some good food. Yeah. Oscar, I appreciate you. I appreciate well, your time. Thank you, Gabe. I appreciate your good food and your efforts. And, uh, man, I wish you the best of luck. And... I hope you sell dinners to to so many more people in the future. And I hope every now and then you get a little slow so I can come in. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Oscar. That was a very nice shot. Thank you, Gabe. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Gabe Molina Podcast. 